Hey super friends, welcome to the JLA member channel. This is Jim with another mental health update. And I'm outside, you can see. Now, believe it or not, this is the end of the month, October. Um, this video will be posted in November, but I wanted you to see that uh, this is the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday. So the transition has begun from spring, summer, into fall, winter. And with that change of the weather brings seasonal affective disorders. The seasonal affective disorders can affect up to 3 million people uh, in a year in the US. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, it's due to the lack of sunlight, to the weather change, and uh, really, uh, you don't have to be someone who has a regular depression or uh, mental illness per se, but uh, during this time of the year, you may start feeling some of those symptoms. Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that comes and goes with the seasons. For most people, it starts in fall and winter, and then resolves in spring. SAD is thought to be linked to a lack of sunlight. It interferes with life, sapping your energy and making you moody. Here are some common symptoms. Sleeping a lot, but still tired. Craving sweets and carbs. Low energy levels. No interest in your favorite activities. Trouble concentrating. Feeling sad, irritable, or anxious. Happily, it's easy to manage SAD. To learn how, visit HealthBeat. So, um, some of the uh, symptoms for seasonal affective disorder are similar for winter, fall, uh, seasonal affective disorder, and for summer. Um, I suffer mostly from the summer version, uh, which is the least common of the two. Uh, but the sim symptoms are similar, and uh, most of the symptoms are feeling depressed most of the days, feelings of worthlessness or hopelessness, sadness, reduced energy, loss of concentration and interest in activities, and just trouble sleeping, and it could be lack of sleep or oversleeping. So some of the uh, treatments um, for seasonal affective disorder, primarily in the fall and winter, um, are light therapy, medications, um, and you know further consultation with a therapist or whatnot, um, antidepressants and things. That should all be regulated by a doctor. So make sure you're checking yourself out with that. Make sure to mention your primary care physician or therapist that you're feeling um, these types of changes and you think that it may be related to the season. Um, some self-care tips that you can do um, to help lessen the stress of the seasonal changes are keeping your house well lit, um, sitting close to the window during the day when it's the brightest, um, trying to get some time outside for the fresh air and taking walks, exercising regularly, eating a well-balanced diet, and that goes without saying for most any um, mental illness or even physical illness. Stick to your treatment plan if you're already in one, and uh, you want to practice relaxation techniques. Um, if it's music or incense, um, yoga, uh, music and art. So those are just a few tips and what you can do to help lessen your seasonal affective disorder. So while the exact cause for seasonal affective disorder is not known, some of the factors that are said to influence the condition include changes to the body's internal clock. Uh, you figure you have daylight savings time um, and that does affect you reduce level of brain chemical serotonin 
an imbalance of the chemical melatonin that influences your sleep and mood patterns, vitamin D insufficiency, uh, gender, uh, women are more prone to seasonal affective disorder. Uh, if your family has a history of seasonal affective disorder, you are more likely to be affected by it as well. And uh, it also notes the distance of living near the equator. Um, I'm not really sure about that. I'm not a geography uh, expert, but it makes sense. Uh, you're near the equator. Um, but if you are experiencing any related symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, don't take it lightly. Um, it really could affect your day-to-day -day life in work and with family. You want to make sure that you're doing all you can to stay positive and engaged with life. So I hope you found some information in this video. Um, I'm going to end it here because it is cold. It's 38 degrees. And uh, as you can see, like I said, it's the middle of the day on a Saturday and it's dark. Um, and I do have my window shades open to try to get in as much light as possible. But we're going to end this video. So thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for the next mental health update. Subscribe to the channel. Leave comments down below if you are affected by seasonal affective disorder. Maybe leave some tips for other people what you do to cope. Have a great day.